Hello and welcome back. In this video we're working through an example of a different sort of application of the cross product, in this case the magnetic force uh, on a moving charge uh, uh, when it's moving through a magnetic field. So uh, one, if, if you've taken an electromagnetism class, uh, you know that a moving electric charge will experience a force when it passes through a magnetic field. If you haven't seen an electromagnetism class, that's okay. I'm going to show a little example. But this is the idea that if you just have a charge uh, moving through a magnetic field, it's going to uh, it's going to feel a force. It's going to move according to that magnetic field. So how uh, is this force calculated? Well, it turns out that it's uh, scalar multiple of the cross product of the velocity vector of the moving charge, V, uh, cross the magnetic field vector. Uh, so magnetic field can be given by vector, or rather a vector field, uh, but we'll get to vector fields later. Right now this is fine. We'll, we'll have a constant vector field uh, according to B. And then we scale that by the actual charge uh, of the electron. And this is just for a single uh, isolated charge, so a point charge moving doesn't have to be an electron, it can be uh, several electrons, but that's the point. We have a moving charge going through a magnetic field. You calculate the force uh, by computing this, Q times V cross B. All right, so let's look at an example. And this might look scary to some of you, especially if you haven't done an uh, electromagnetism class. Uh, so here we have a proton with a certain mass, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms and a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. It's a unit of charge. Uh, it moves along the x-axis with this speed, 9 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. And then uh, as soon as it reaches the origin, a uniform magnetic field is flipped on, and the strength of this magnetic field is 1 tesla directed along the negative z-axis. So that is the magnetic field is pointing uh, sort of downward with a strength of 1 tesla. And we want to find the magnitude and direction of the force on the proton. And then we're going to work out, uh, so let's look at, a, let's look at a, a visual of this. So let me jump to my scene. This, you can find this uh, example in your book. So this point here, Q, this is my charge. Uh, the magnetic field B is pointing downward. This is a uniform magnetic field. That means everywhere in space it's pointing downward uh, with one tesla of strength. So that's uh, minus K is my magnetic field. And then my velocity vector. So my, my charge here, Q, is trying to move along the positive x-axis. Right, it was it was over here, it was moving with a, with a certain speed. And then it hit the origin, we switched on this magnetic field. And now we're seeing what happens to it. Well, what happens to it is it's going to feel a sort of torque torquey type force uh, because it's going to make it go in a circle. So as it moves, this force that the charge field is going to go this way. It's the cross product of V and B. It's going to go inward to the center of the circle. And it's, that means it's going to change the velocity of the charge. And it's going to send it moving in a circle like this. Notice the force is always perpendicular to both the direction that the electron is traveling as well as the magnetic field which is pointing downward. And the net effect is that this electron is now going to move in a circle. So this is, or sorry, the proton. We're dealing with a proton here. So the idea is if I want to say capture a proton and have it just go around in a circle, I can do this. I can wait till it gets to a certain point, switch on a magnetic field downward, and then it's going to travel this direction around a circle. So that's what we're working out here is what is this force that it's feeling? And then two, uh, can we identify uh, what, this, what this circle is? So I'll jump back to the problem at hand. Right, what's our second one? Uh, we want to find the radius of that orbit because it's going to turn it into a circle. All right, so let's work this out. Uh, really, it's just a lot of plugging and chugging, but it's helpful to understand why this is sort of why this is happening, um, at least at some level. So find the magnetic magnetic uh, ma the magnitude and direction of the force on the proton and the instant it enters the magnetic field. So that happens at zero zero zero. Uh, so at this instant we have uh, our magnitude of our magnetic field, B, is going 1 in the downward direction, so negative z-axis, 0, 0, negative 1 is our B. Our velocity vector, so how is the electron moving as it goes into, so it's moving along the x-axis, so just directly along the x-axis with a speed of this many, so that means our vector is... Um, 
positive x-axis, so this is going to be 9 times 10 to the 5th, 0, 0. Um, and let's see, do we need anything else? We also need the charge. Charge is Q. So that's a scalar quantity. It's a positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Right? It's a single, uh, single proton. So it's this charge. And then we can compute. So let's see. Oh, hi, cat. Sorry, my cat has decided to join me as I record. Uh, our force, so hopefully she doesn't hit anything here. Force vector is Q times V cross B. So let's calculate V cross B and multiply by Q. So let's see, uh, our force vector that we're determining is Q times um, V cross B. So let's, I'm gonna calculate V cross B first. As I mentioned, I advocate for this is doing your calculations in steps. So to compute a cross product, I'm gonna do the determinant. So notice my, my vectors are given uh, like as vectors in component form. And so that tells me to compute the cross product. It'll be easiest to use the determinant of a three by three. So this is I, J, K. Uh, v is nine times 10 to the fifth here. J is zero. K is zero, and then my magnetic field is zero, zero, negative one. And let's work this out. Uh, so I'm gonna have I times zero, 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 negative one. Let me get some space here. Oh, kitty, you can't. <laughs> Her name is Cora, and she is on my writing pad. <laughs> All right, she's leaving. All right, I'll, I'll hang out with you in a second, Cora. Let me finish this video. All right, uh, I'm sorry about that. Minus J times the determinant of this matrix, 9 times 10 to the fifth. Uh, we have a 0 over here, a 0 here, negative 1. Computing the force on a moving charge, Cora. I'll be done in a minute. We'll hang out. Uh, plus, I've been making videos all morning. She's probably sick of me just looking at the computer screen and talking. Probably wonders who I'm talking to. Uh, 9 times 10 to the fifth here. Uh, and then let's see, I have a 0, 0, 0. So notice there's a lot of zeros in these matrices, which means a lot of them are actually going to turn out to be 0. So let's see, in the i direction, I have 0 times negative 1 minus 0. That's just 0. Uh, in the j direction, ah, that's one that's not going to be 0. I have negative 9 times 10 to the fifth minus 0 uh, with another negative. So this is going to be 9 times 10 to the fifth in the j direction, and in the k, I get a zero for that determinant. So it's just this. And so my vector is zero, nine times 10 to the fifth, zero. So this is my force vector in Newtons. Uh, and then I multiply that by q, my charge. Uh, sorry, no, this is not in Newtons yet. Once I multiply it by the charge, I'll be in Newtons. Uh, and so then f is q times v cross b. And so this will be Q times zero, nine times 10 to the fifth, zero. Q is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. So let's see here, so I'll get a zero. So this is telling me it's gonna, the force is going in the J direction at zero, zero, zero. Um, zero and then 1.6. Uh, times 10 to the, I have an scientific notation here, no, no, no. E, e is the button, E, e is what we're looking for. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Let's put parentheses around that. Um, times nine, put parentheses around this too, times nine E five. And so I get out 1.44 times 10 to the negative 19th. And that, yeah, that checks out. That seems right. Because remember, uh, if we go back to the, to the, uh, the visual here, when I was, let me get it back to the start, when we were just right at the origin where this problem starts, my force vector is just in the positive y-axis along the positive y-axis, so it should just have a j component, and it should be positive, and indeed it does by our calculation. So that means we are doing this uh, correctly, or at least it's matching up to our, our visual. 
Uh, so that's an important step is just making sure this is, this is working right. So here's the answer to the first part of our problem, uh, the magnitude and direction of the force. Uh, so its direction is along the j-axis with a magnitude of 1.44 times 10 to the negative 13th is our force. Uh, so we can say that. Uh, we really should give both the magnitude and direction. So what can I say here? I can say that the magnitude of f is exactly 1.44 times 10 to the negative 13th. And this is in Newtons. And this is in the uh, direction. We can give a direction by saying in the direction of the positive y-axis. All right, cool. Uh, what's the next step of this? Assume the proton loses no energy and it acts as a centripetal force uh, with this magnitude, m, v, m magnitude of V squared over R that keeps the proton in a circular orbit. Uh, so right, you don't actually have to know about centripetal acceleration. If you've taken a physics class, you've you know seen this before, mv squared over R, this force. Uh, all that I'm asking you to do here now is uh, use the force that we got here, the magnitude, and basically uh, plug it in with the magnitude of the velocity and the mass of the proton and figure out what the radius is, uh, the radius of that orbit. So let's see. So we have magnitude F is uh, M times V squared over the radius R. So that tells me that r, my radius, m times magnitude of the velocity vector over magnitude of the force vector. And all we need to do now is plug and chug. We have the magnitude of the velocity. Velocity is this, so the magnitude is 9 times 10 uh, to the fifth. Uh, what's my m? Jumping ahead, let's see, what's my m? My m is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27th, very small. Uh, so that's 1.7 times 10 to the seventh uh, times my velocity, which is nine times ten. Nine uh, times ten to the fifth. I'm going to square that. So this is nine times ten to the fifth. I'll square that and divide it by the magnitude of the force vector, which we found in the first part of this problem, which is. 1.44 times 10 to the negative 13th. Remember, when you're doing uh, this scientific notation in your calculator, that's the EE -E button, and you want to have these in uh, parentheses, each one. So here I have, let's see, 1.7 E negative 27 times parentheses 9 E 5, and parentheses square it, and then divide by parentheses 1.44 e negative 13, oop, negative 13. And what I get out is 0 0.009, about, uh, let's say, 5.6. And this should be in meters. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. So not about 9 millimeters was the radius of this, um, this circle that we had. So let me maybe jump back there now that we figured this out. The radius of that circle is about nine millimeters, nine and a half millimeters. Pretty cool. All right, that's the end of this uh, example problem and the end of the section. So I will uh, see you in the next section.